he's the face that launched one of the largest entertainment companies in history. Apart from movies and TV shows, it's his bubbly, go get em personality that's drawn kids and adults to him through the years. Yep, we're talking about Mickey Mouse, the Walt Disney Company's iconic mascot. Disney's animated, rambunctious rodent has had a spirited 95-year history of character redesigns, audiovisual upgrades, and even personality changes. Lately, Mickey Mouse has been the talk of the town because last January 1, 2024, Mickey's very first iteration and broadcasted short film Steamboat Willie entered the public domain. Many presume that this means Mickey Mouse's copyright is finally free for anyone to use and monetize. Well, not exactly. As we explore the almost 100 years of rich history since Steamboat Willie opened up the wonderful world of animation further, we'll also examine what the implications are with Steamboat Willie now being accessible via public domain. Let's travel back 95 years to revisit the makings of one of the entertainment world's most beloved figure. Hello and welcome to History of Life, where we relive history's greatest moments and the eras in between. We're going to trace the origins of Steamboat Willie, the timeless short film that introduced Mickey Mouse to the world, and ponder on its entering the public domain this year. Today, we're going to set sail on a journey through time to explore the story of a celebrated nautical hero who unlocked the imagination of young and old. This is none other than Steamboat Willie, played by the one and only Mickey Mouse. This maritime story involves a mischievous mouse, a sprinkle of animation magic, and a revolution in the world of entertainment. So buckle up, folks, and prepare to be swept away by the tide of Mickey Mouse's pioneering epic voyage. Right before he became the star of his own show, Mickey Mouse was just a background character. animated series of shorts called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. According to Walt's very own directive, Oswald was designed to be peppy, alert, saucy, and venturesome, keeping him also neat and trim. At this point in his career with Universal Pictures, Walt had full creative control among his 20 animator team, which he assembled himself. He interjected so much personality into Oswald because, as per Walt's own words, I wanted the characters to be somebody. I don't want them to just be a drawing. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was an astounding success for Universal Pictures at the time. Walt and Roy Disney earned $500 for each Oswald short that year. And with the money they made, the Disney brothers bought 10 acres of land in the California desert. When Walt tried to renegotiate his contract a year later, 
Not only was his percentage and profits reduced, but he also found out most of his animators were pirated by the production company. Even more tragic was Walt finding out that despite creating Oswald the Lucky Rabbit himself, Universal Pictures owned the intellectual property rights of the cartoon character. A disheartened Walt left Universal Pictures, with only his brother, Roy, loyal animators, Ob Iwerks and Wilford Jackson, and apprentice artist Lace Clark following him. Legend has it that on his train ride home from his crucial meeting with his former employer, instead of wallowing in his rejection, Walt instead had an awakening. He birthed an idea to create a new cartoon character, one which he could finally own the copyright for. When Walt and his small team were brainstorming ideas for a new proprietary cartoon character, Ub Iwerks sketched various animal characters like Clarabel Cow and Horace Horse Color. Walt wasn't feeling them that much, but he also didn't throw these characters away as they would be seen in future cartoon shorts later. Walt also wanted to avoid any cat or clown characters due to the popularity of the already existing cartoons Felix the Cat and Coco the Clown. As they brainstormed further, the team also revisited some of their past characters in the alley's comedies. One of those characters that stuck out to them was a swashbuckling mouse from Alice's Wonderland. Remember him? Aside from this fictional rodent, history has always speculated as to where Walt really got the idea of Mickey Mouse from. The one prevalent theory was that Walt was inspired by a real-life tame mouse that would reappear from time to time at his desk in his old studio at Laphogram Films. Walt apparently interacted with his small furry visitor in his old office, which led past animator Hugh Harmon to sketch an illustration of Walt hanging around with cartoon mice. Walt and Ub Iwerks drew inspiration from that sketch by Hugh Harmon and took it from there. Sadly, that original illustration has been lost to time, but some of the earliest concept art sketches for Mickey Mouse has been saved and are now housed at the Walt Disney Family Museum. And so, Mickey, or rather, Mortimer Mouse, was born, and that was the name Walt christened him at first. Walt's wife Lillian thought Mortimer sounded rather pompous and suggested instead to have it changed to Mickey. Although Mortimer Mouse didn't materialize for this particular mouse, Walt still kept the name, which was later used for the character of Minnie Mouse's uncle. Now that the puzzle pieces had fallen into place, the proprietary character that Walt longed to create had finally come to life. And so, there he was. Mickey Mouse, with his signature shorts with two round buttons, somewhat pear-shaped head, and slip-on shoes. Walt's very own animated star was ready to make his big break on the silver screen. Are you having a blast with all this history behind Steamboat Willie and Mickey Mouse? Are there tidbits here that you never imagined happened in real life? Keep watching as you'll be astonished with more fascinating facts about Disney's beloved character. The very first Mickey Mouse short that Walt and Up Iwerks made was Plain Crazy in 1928. Mickey's high-flying character in this silent short is inspired by his idol, prolific aviator Charles Lindbergh. Minnie Mouse also made her debut alongside Clarabelle Cow, who, if you recall, was one of Up Iwerks' first character suggestions to Walt before. For playing crazy, what's striking is that Mickey Mouse's personality is somewhat like that of a bully and a brat, to the point that Minnie Mouse storms off from him. In spite of hijinks and hilarity on screen, this rather nasty side of Mickey Mouse could be the reason why it didn't do too well when it was screened to a test audience on May 15, 1928. Even an executive from Metro Goldwyn Mayer Studios, who was part of the test audience, passed up on distributing the short. Not to be deterred, Walt and team carried on. Their second short was The Gallopin' Gaucho, an animated parody of the silent adventure romance film The Gaucho, which was headlined by Hollywood great Douglas Fairbanks. Once again, Minnie Mouse appears in the silent short alongside Mickey, but it's the appearance of the villainous bootleg Pete that really sets the tone apart of the Gallopin' Gaucho from Plain Crazy. 
Interestingly enough, Bootleg Pete was actually Waltz and Ob Iwerks' oldest continuing character, having made his debut on the Alley's comedies in 1925. The Gallop and Gaucho is the first Mickey Mouse short that shows him turning on the courage, in spite being the underdog and rescuing Minnie Mouse from the sinister actions of Bootleg Pete. Unfortunately, the Gallop and Gaucho landed the same fate as playing crazy and failed to get a distributor. Thankfully, Walt Disney was not one to give up on his cherished creation, so he and Ub Iwerks persevered with another Mickey Mouse short. This time around, though, Walt knew he had to do things differently. In 1927, Walt saw a groundbreaking movie that gave him his light bulb moment, The Jazz Singer. Widely regarded as the first Hollywood talkie, The Jazz Singer was a part-talkie musical drama film that pioneered the use of synchronized recorded music and lip-synchronous speech and singing. Mother, I'm sorry. I wandered away. Walt was completely mesmerized by the film and realized that the only way he could move forward with his Mickey Mouse shorts was by adding in that one element it lacked before, synchronized sound. From now on. You like that, Mama? So, in 1928, Walt and Ub Iwerks ventured to make what would eventually become their biggest breakthrough yet. Steamboat Willie was inspired by the Buster Keaton film Steamboat Bill Jr. released in early 1928. Meanwhile, Steamboat Bill Jr. itself was inspired by the popular 1910 song Steamboat Bill by renowned ragtime singer Arthur Collins. Down the Mississippi steam the wheel, commanded by the pilot Mr. Steamboat Bill. So when the animated Steamboat Willie opens, Mickey Mouse is featured steering a side-wheeler down a river, whistling to the merry tune of Steamboat Bill. <laughs> Minnie Mouse and Bootleg Pete also make an appearance in the short, but what really steals the show are the boat's three animated whistles along with a mischievous parrot aboard the ship. Before the film's sound recording, Walt wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to fail a third time. So, he did a test screening to mostly Disney employees and their wives, projecting the short film in a room adjacent to his office, with just Walt and his other animators providing the accompanying live sound effects. Much to their relief and excitement, the test audience thoroughly enjoyed the short film with a live sound experience. This gave Walt the determination to complete the sound recording of the short film immediately. The accompanying song, melodies, and sound effects were so well synchronized that Steamboat Willie was finally picked up for distribution by Pat Power Celebrity Productions. Steamboat Willie premiered in New York's Universal's Colony Theater, now known as the Broadway Theater, in November of 1928. In its first run, the short film was presented five times a day as the opener for the independent feature film Gang War. Steamboat Willie was an instant hit, landing Walt Disney his first massive success in his career. It's also fitting that we also pay tribute to Ob Iwerks, who was the lead animator for Mickey Mouse in the early years. While he went on to create many more iconic cartoon characters later in his career, Ob Iwerks has always had this to say about Steamboat Willie. I've never been so thrilled in my life. Nothing since has ever equaled it. It's been 95 years since Steamboat Willie first graced the silver screens, yet it still continues to entertain a new generation of audiences. It has always been a cinematic marvel, especially considering the limitations of film technology at the time. Now that it's finally entered the public domain in the United States, many think it's free for anyone to use. Many people, however, don't realize that what's in the public domain is just the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse. This means that reproducing from any of the other iterations of Mickey Mouse can still render copyright infringement. Likewise, copyright regulations differ per country. So, in some territories outside of the US, even the use of Steamboat Willie can still be seen as a violation. 
It's also important to note that while Steamboat Willie may have entered the public domain this 2024, it still has its trademark, which never expires and still protects the Disney cartoon to a degree. You may create anything based off of Steamboat Willie, but caution and research are heavily advised, so you can know up to what parameters you can have with your own cartoon reproductions. Regardless of copyright ownership, we still laud Steamboat Willie for being a technological breakthrough in the worlds of animation and cinema. More than that, we commend Walt Disney's determination and imagination, paired with Ub Iwerks talent, to create a beloved cartoon character that has stayed relevant and amusing all throughout these 95 years, and most likely in many more years to come. Thank you for watching History of Life. We hope you enjoyed this detailed breakdown of Steamboat Willie's origins and public domain implications. Like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to know when the next one comes out. See you in the next video!